Hey guys, it's Panadaily here, and welcome back to Let's Play Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. In the last bit, we finished off the dance hall and moved into the inner quarters, aka the harem. And today, we're going to be heading back there to fill that out. But first, let's head back. We need to see Mina and Hammer. Hammer, because we've got a crap load of stuff to sell him, and Mina, because, well, we're going to be advancing the plot a little, and she's actually useful for that. Dun -da dun 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 past the zombies, through the ruined empty corridor. The front corridor is always infested with zombies, it's a Castlevania thing. And through here. Alright, first, let's go talk to Mina. Okay. Welcome back. Hey, Mina. What's up? It's kind of late to ask, but what kind of shrine is the Hakuba Shrine? Soma, do you know the story of the Amano Iwado Shrine? I think I've heard it before. In the story, Tensha Daijin hides herself in the shrine to calm Susanoo down. Yeah, I remember now. Tensha Daijin is the sun. The act of hiding symbolizes an eclipse. By hiding herself away, she was able to contain Susanoo's anger. For that reason, eclipses are thought to confine anger and evil intentions. Yes, people have prayed to eclipses for centuries. And the Hakuba Shrine is a shrine for this very purpose. I understand now. And usually we only conduct ceremonies for Japan's eclipses, but... In 1999, a ritual was conducted in Europe. Yes, that's what I was told. And that's when Dracula's castle was sealed inside it. That's why I knew the things Mr. Ricardo were s said were... Yes, I know now that he spoke the truth. I'm sorry. I haven't been much help to you. That's not true. I feel a bit relieved now. Thanks, Mina. All right. So, yeah, a little explanation. All right, let's sell some crap to Hammer. Let's see here. Sell him the basil art. We don't need it anymore. Sell him both combat knives. They're nice, but we don't need them. Sell him the whip sword. Goodbye, whip sword. Keep the fronting. Uh, actually, keep the broadsword, just in case. Sell him the rapier. Sell him the katar. Sell him the lance. And the cestus. And the cloth tunic. Sell the... Hmm. The ninja suit's better than what we're wearing? Really? Oh, it's got a higher attack, but the defense not as good. Sell the ninja suit, sell the copper plate, and the samurai armor, and the cape. We c All right, now we'll go in and see what we can buy from him. We're full up on potions and mind-ups. He doesn't really have anything new. He has some weaponry, but most of it you can find in the castle, and it's really not worth paying money to hammer. Uh, we could get the steel plate. Actually, you know, I think I'm going to. I don't think we'll necessarily get it. So, we'll sell him our iron plate, too. Just to keep our inventory down. And Now let's uh, equip the steel plate. I think it's a drop off something, so we might get one. Now I want to go back and see something here. Give me a sec. Because... Okay. Welcome back. I have a message for you from Arakado. From Arakado? Yes, it's, uh... If you stand on the water and jump from that spot, you'll be able to go up there. Stand on the water? What does that mean? Maybe you have to act like a ninja? I see. Come back again later. Maybe I'll have another message from Arakado. I'll check back with you whenever I can. So yeah, if you're ever confused about where to go and what to do, talk to Mina. Ow. She will occasionally, like every time you finish an area, have a new message from Arakado which tells you where to go. Right now we're going to go, um, yeah, fill out the, or back to the inner quarters and f fill out the map. But yeah, if you're ever lost, talk to Mina. She will tell you where to go. 
Mm, it'll be cryptic, but, you know, what can you expect from Arakato? Hey, Valkyrie! Slashes enemies with a sword. Well, let's take a look at it. It's extremely expensive. But... Uh, we'll use it here in a sec. Maybe on one of the Persephones. Yeah, that guy annoys me. Or on a Valkyrie. Yeah, see, it's... But it, it takes a good chunk out of your MP, and I don't really think it's worth it. Pardon me. Alright, so, let's see. While I'm here, I'll just kill a couple of Kali's and, you know, just one trip up and down the stairway. Ow. Okay, maybe not. Ow. I hate... Oh, ah, imp. Alright, this was obviously a bad idea. I regret everything. Let's just go this way. And here we have more Persephones. Move along. Da, da, da. Let's see. More Persephones. And here we have a Lilith. Lilith, sometimes thought to be the mother of demons in certain systems of thought, was supposedly Adam's first wife stemming from a uh, Jewish sort of legend that was in part to um, cover the discrepancy between the two chapters of Genesis, one of which said male and female he created humans, and then, of course, the later one which said Adam was created and then Eve. It's an interesting story, and Lilith is a pretty interesting character. These are basically just lower level succubi though. They can curse you if they hit you with that heart that they spit. And of course they come up out of the ground. So, first let's go downstairs. And here we have more killer dolls. And another Persephone. I mean, I was getting these guys' souls like candy on my test run. I don't know what happened. Apparently, the luck only likes me when I'm not recording. And, of course, if we drop down, we go back to the castle corridor. But we've got a little more clearing out to do. Kill the Persephone. Kill the killer doll. More Persephones. Lady. Uh, and there we go. And down this way. And down there, there's a mind up, which of course we can't get because we're full. And whoops, Lilith. Have a kitty, lady. Cats are nice because they get multiple hits and they don't, they, you know, they don't disappear. So you can throw a cat and it'll hit whoever's behind the ones you're attacking. They don't do a lot of damage, but they can do a fair amount. You know, it, it does add up. Watch out for Lilith's... Oh, and we got the Lilith's soul. That increases our intelligence, which um, ups the power of our uh, guardian souls, the blue ones. And, of course, if I try and pick that up... Yeah, you hear that clashing noise? That means I'm full, and thus cannot pick up anymore. Now we see... See that little space in the map? There isn't actually a, um, a room or anything there. It's just a thing. And... Oh, Which souls are actually pretty nice if you can get them? We have giant ghosts, so it's not actually that important. Do watch out for the cats, because they will do one damage. And so we go out. And into a new area. The top floor. Locks, clocks, stocks, and housewares. Okay. Unfortunately, that's very ominous music, and we don't spend much time here because we can't get up there through that ceiling yet. Instead, here we are, right back in the marble corridor again. So, kill kill the dolls. Let's see. And 
jump down here. Now that we can double jump, of course, we can get back up here if we need to. And now... Now, you remember Mina told us that Arakato says we have to stand on the water using Moondeen and jump up from that spot. Anybody remember a spot like that? Well, you probably do. So, we'll make our way back through this. See if anybody wants us to get, wants to give us a soul that hasn't before. And there's that peeping eye. Let's see. In... Okay, right through there. And... Yep. We're definitely getting stronger. You can see how much faster we go through axe armors. Which is nice. And we go through here. And... Drop. Ha! Ow! Darn bird. Yeah, we can get through... Yeah, we can kill the boar with no problem, but we keep walking into the crow. Never mind how the crows are hovering like that. Crows are not hummingbirds. Crows would like to be hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, on the other hand, think they're jet fighters. No, we're not going to save the game, but a little extra health is always nice. And we go down here. And right through the realm of the killer fish. Let's see. I guess these are guys are basically based on um, the idea of Piranha. And there certainly was a really cheesy horror movie about Piranha called Piranha 3D. Um, but let's see. Piranhas aren't really classic horror movie monsters. Then again, neither is half of what we meet in this castle. Back to Ghost Dancer, because I like the luck. And into our next area. The Floating Garden. Not to be confused with Osaka's Floating Garden Observatory. Cockatrice. They can and will poison you. That's what their eye beams do. You don't want... You're poisoned. Petrified. You don't want to get petrified. It's annoying. See? That happens. And they will do that to you if you're not careful. Repeated petrification. Dead warrior! Here's another really badly translated soul. Let's see if we can get it. No. I will probably wind up coming back and grinding for it at some point. Save point. No, probably no. Well, actually, yes, just in case. Not that I actually think I'm going to die, but it's nice to be safe. This way, you know, power outages are also taken care of. Let's see. The thing with these guys is you kind of want to figure out their range. But if you stay too, f if you stay too far outside their range, they just won't come onto the screen. And there's the red crow soul. Ups our int by four. Notice the moon, of course, is smaller and not quite as peachy. And more cockatrices. We don't want to be where that thing will catch us. I'm going to try and fill in the whole map just because, yeah, that's what I do. You can get over that, but... And here we have a Gorgon! And much like the Katobopos, that they are a... Uh, palette swap of, they will petrify you. And also can, in fact, drop tasty meat. There's no way up through that particular hole in the ceiling from there, so... Just go this way, stand up here, and wait. And this thing, of course... Here we go through here, and we get, as we saw, the castle map. Now, that show, this is the last map of the castle. There are still bits we haven't seen, but they won't be on any map. We just have to find them. And as you can see, there's a lot of areas that are completely disconnected. This is where the castle starts getting a little non-Euclidean. Okay. Yeah, nope, can't get up there. And I'm not dealing with you. 
your soul isn't that great. I think it's just a it's a stat boosting soul. Let's see. Right, so we go up. Ow! Really? That was interesting. Let's see if we go through here. Of course. We go across here. We are now on the highest level of the floating garden. Come over here. And do there. And now we have a devil. These guys, of course, you know, you, if you haven't heard of the devil, you probably uh, have never been exposed to any English-speaking media, and so probably are not watching this. Devils, as opposed to demons in D&D, are kind of interesting, because devils are lawful evil, while demons are chaotic. It's a minor interesting thing. These places are very odd. We are in, of course, the Floating Garden. None of these places are apparently connect to each other on the map. You just walk out one side and walk in the other. Most of them also have money up here. And in fact, not all of these connect to each other in the same order. Going through left to right as we're going, you will go through different rooms in a different order than if you go through right to left. Yeah, it's that kind of thing. Let's see. And up here we have a lot of dead warriors. Their soul is useless, but the tra bad translation is amusing, so I do sort of want to show it off. Ouch. Okay. So, step into lure him forward. Come back here so that he doesn't hit you. And lather, rinse, repeat. Hopefully if I kill enough of these guys, one of them will give me a stupid soul. I think there's like four of them. Ow. Yeah. There's either three or four on three on that. It looks like three on that thing. But if we come up here, we find bone pillars, which we're now hitting two with every strike. And then there's 10,000, or 1,000 gold. And then we go over here, and there's another 1,000 gold. That's a lot more money than you usually find, but it's, it's, you know, pretty decent. So we continue, and now we're in the special area of the floating garden. And we have rippers, pallet-swapped flea men who are, if possible, even more annoying. Their soul's kind of cool, though not necessarily all that useful. Stop annoying me. Uh, and then Altair, or Altair, which is Arabic for eagle. And uh, that soul is kind of useful, and I sort of like it. It's uh, It hits pretty hard straight in front, and that can be a problematic thing to get. So we'll just, um, you know, grab a few of these, see if... They kind of remind me of the Albatross from uh, Super Mario Bros. 2. Alright, just a few more, and then I'm gonna go down. Yeah. Alright, fine. Alright, we'll go back here, and then... Fine, you're not that useful. So we'll go in here. No, we're not gonna save just yet, because out here is the only one of this enemy in the game, the Kicker Skeleton! As you can tell by his kick and his scarf, he is a common Rider reference. He has two equipment drops, the Red Scarf and the Ancient Belt, which is a Henshin Belt. And is actually a pretty nice um, item, but that the kick, the bla his uh, ability soul. He's the only actual enemy with a gray soul in the game, and that kick is quite useful. For one thing, it'll let us get into a special place later. But for now, I think let's see. 
I think we're going to call it. That's been about 20 minutes, so let's save the game, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.